بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا رسول الله سيد الأولين والآخرين على آله وصحبته أجمعين رب شرح صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحل الأقرة تم لساني يفقه قولي Allah bless you I will praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send peace and blessings upon uh, our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon his family, his companions, and those who follow them until the end of time. Uh, it's great to see everybody here. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's nice to see, mashallah, so many familiar faces and brothers and sisters. As you know, my wife is from the area, so I never really left, right? So when you marry from an area, you become like part of the area. You say, maqtaraba shayyata hukmu. It's like a famous axiom in Islamic law. When something draws near to something, it takes its ruling. So I officially became a turtle when I married Maryam from Maryland, mashallah. So alhamdulillah, uh, it's great to see everybody. As you know, I recently moved back uh, from New York City because mashallah, I have now two kids. I have four kids, but I have two new firmware updates. Uh, alhamdulillah, the most recent was in July, which means uh, there's no sleep, mashallah, and uh, perennial poverty. Alhamdulillah. So we're back in the area because my wife, I'm white, I have four cousins total. My wife has 81 like first and second cousins. They all live in the area. So with the free, ba free babysitting and free uh, ling language skill acquisition, you know, who could say no? So it's great to be back. And the Imam uh, Farhan, he asked me to come uh, once a week, Alhamdulillah, and eventually to see potentially opening up a branch of Swiss uh, in like Dara Hijra, where we would offer like classes, adult classes, night education, and uh, night school. Uh, but now I told him step by step, you know, with, with two babies. Uh, and I have the night shift, alhamdulillah. So let's take some time. Uh, we'll see how it goes, bi'ithnillah. Uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put ikhlas in this important journey that we're about to take through this book, Riyadh al-Salihin. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in yarzuqna bi riyadh as-salihin. Huna wa fi jannat al-na'im. We ask Allah to grant us riyadh as-salihin in this life and the next. Um, this book is an incredibly important book and um, it's written by a very important person who was born around 631 after Hijri. He died around 676 after Hijri. Had the Sayyidina Imam al nawawi uh, rahimahullah. Uh, Imam al uh thank you so much. May Allah bless all the volunteers. You know, it's a lot of work to keep these things going, man. It's not easy work. So may Allah bless you, inshallah. Um, so Imam al Nawi, radiallahu anhu, we'll, we'll mention some things about him like every time because his, his, his importance is, is very difficult to encapsulate and it would take like lessons to go through his life, but it's sufficient to know that as a child, like he didn't play, he wasn't known to be a child who played. In fact, one time uh, a person saw him and he was sitting and children were playing with a cow. And he asked him like, why aren't you playing with a cow? He said, Ma li, li, li that. I wasn't created to play. So then he knew like this individual, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created him for an important reason, so he took him to the madrasa or the kutab. And here we see a very nice lesson about ageism. You know, America is rocked with ageism. You know, old versus young, young versus old. That older gentleman, he didn't feel insecure at the talent of Imam Anawi. He recognized that talent, so he directed it. And, and he began to study and he excelled in his studies. And he became known as the Sheikh of the Shafi'iyah. At the end of the Shafi Madhab, everything really goes back to two people, but Sheikh Rafa'i, but also Sayyidina Sheikh al Nawi. There's a funny story also, Nawa means nuclear now. So when I lived in Egypt, uh, there was a group of students in the Azhar that they got, their house got raided by uh, Al Ghurab, yani, the, uh, the secret police of Egypt. And they found in their house this book, Riyadh Salihin, and they saw the name An-Nawawi, which means nuclear also. 
So they thought they were terrorists. So they actually held them and were going to try them on terrorist charges. And then subhanAllah they found out like this is Imam an nawawi man. This is not like a handbook on building nuclear weapons. A dirty bomb. Remember the dirty bomb scare? Years ago like they thought they were making a dirty bomb. SubhanAllah. So Imam an nawawi I think what's important for us is to realize that his contemporaries noted a number of qualities about him that may be important to us before we start this text. The first was that he was known to be someone who did not covet fame and he did not look for benefit through his scholarly privilege. In fact, it was the opposite. He was known to be extremely humble and he was known to be extremely approachable. The second two, and I'm going to make them brief because of time, or with his students. And the first was that his students, when they would make mistakes, he wasn't harsh on them. And that is the, that's the quality of an ignorant person. And a lot of times, you know, many of us may have young children. We sometimes are scared that they may have a bad experience with a religious educator because we know that unfortunately, Sometimes religious education at an early age is linked to intimidation, right? Being made to feel inferior, being made to question things like your gender, your ethnicity, your language, how you pronounce things. There's a lot of trauma. And this is a trick of shaitan to make a, a person of religion feel like the ummah should serve him instead of he has been put in a place or she has been put in a place to serve the ummah. And this is actually a great fitna. So it was witnessed like the people that would read to him and they would make mistakes, even though he was like this great, great scholar, he would be very kind with them. And I, I witnessed this, you know, years ago, uh, I was lucky to read Hassan Asim to Sheikh Sayyid Jibreel, the brother of Muhammad Jibreel. So <laughs> there was an old man, he was Palestinian. He would come like in, at the Fajr time to read and he was very old, so of course, as he became older, it was more difficult to pronounce, you know, and read. It comes with age. And so, and then he had lived, like, in the U.S., so his, sometimes he would confuse, like, the dialect with English. So he was reading Surat Al-Qiyamah. And of course, banana. And he was saying banana. Like Moz. The sheikh, he said to him, Banana or banana? He's like, banana. He kept saying it. Banana. And Sheikh, he said, Do you want to eat bananas or what? And then the uncle, he started laughing. And so the Sheikh, he said, please, please, try to say banana, not banana. Then of course, he said, what? Mose. Banana. But I remember seeing like Sheikh Sayyid Jibril, he's like a great scholar, right? Perhaps one of the most um, profound scholars of just Hafs in Egypt. And he's like being easy with him, you know, and making him feel relaxed and comfortable. I remember when I took my exam in Usul al-Fiqh, that exam was like an oral examination. And Dr. Uh, Slahuddin Zaydan, He's, maybe he's passed away, he was very old. So on my, on my, you know, on my Azhar card is like William Webb, man. It's not a Soye Webb, because of your passport. So he looked at it, I was there for my oral exam, Usul al-Fiqh, and he was like, William Webb, you know? And he was like, where are you from? I said, I'm from Obamistan, Jitumin Obamistan. And I think Ken Obama, Ken Rais, my Ken Trump, Mawjud, Alhamdulillah. So he said to me, Oh, and then he realized, like, I'm not Arab, you know. So he started say, asking me, In America, do they have koshery? It's like a famous dish in Egypt. In America, do they have umali? It's like a dessert, like gulab jamun, you know, or apple pie. So he was asking me all these questions, right, to try to relax me. And then afterwards, he said, like, it's time to take the exam now. Are you, are you comfortable? I said, yeah, yeah, I'm good. Right, so like real, real teachers, one of the qualities I think that should be asked of hiring imams or Islamic studies teachers, are you an insecure person? 
Because like if you're an insecure person, you're about to get pounded, bro. Like every day someone's going to have something to say to you. Every day someone's going to be critical of you. Every day you're going to be challenged. And if you, if you don't love the ummah, and you're not secure enough even in your mistakes, you can't do this job effectively. You'll, you'll hurt people, you'll break people. So Imam an nawi he was known to be very caring like to his students, very kind. And that's what the Prophet taught us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ma la yurham la yurham, like, who's not merciful, doesn't receive mercy. And this is a mistake. Shaitan sometimes tricks religious people to make them so harsh and mean that they think they can intimidate people into the mercy of Allah. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. The third thing that's very important is that he took kind of like an oath from his students that, that they would not be troublemakers. Like they would not be like Team Imam Nawi. Like, like they weren't going around and destabilizing communities because of a celebrity sheikh. But they were working for the unity of the Muslims. And they saw themselves posited very much as being people who were meant to serve. And there's one statement of Sayyidina Imam and Nawi that we can mention that's like, it really lets you know sort of where he is. He said, you should prepare your heart to learn like you prepare soil for cultivation. He's very interested in like how he, how he carried himself, how he lived his life. And he died very young, but he was able to like use those short years that he was alive to do a lot, man. He wrote some very, very important books. Everyone here, I'm sure most Muslims, they have one of the books of Imam an nawawi in their house. Whether it's the 40 hadith, maybe like, I didn't even know he wrote that. Actually, he didn't write it. He started at Hadith 23. We'll talk about that maybe in the future one day. He wrote part of it up until like around the Hadith 36. He wrote some of the most important books in the Shafi'i school later on. And then this book that we're going to talk about today, inshallah, we're going to start Riyadh al-Salihin. Riyadh al-Salihin, we say to the, about the Shaykh first, Rahimahullah. وَنَفْعَنَ اللَّهُ تَعَلَى بِعِلْمِهِ فِي دَارِنِ أَمِينٍ the book Riyad Salihin is a collection as he's going to talk about as we read through his introduction, inshaAllah, and start the first chapter of a hadith that have a specific objective that he's going to identify for us as we read his text. The word Riyadh, it means a garden. But what we should think about is, and this is very important, that the Quran and the Sunnah are fertile. I want you to think about that for a minute. Like, the Quran and the Sunnah are fertile. You plant your life in them, you'll grow. You plant yourself in them, you'll develop. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Istajibu lillahi wa li rasuli idha da'akum lima yuhyikum. Answer Allah and His Messenger when you're called to what will give you life. Most people looking for life in things that are dead. And as Muslims, Allah says in the Quran, who created death and life. Death is dunya, and life is akhirah. So we, huh? we live to die, we don't die to live. Most people, they die to live. They will put themselves through all kinds of torment and hardship and pain and suffering for something that's not gonna last. But the Muslim is the one Ah, we live to die. Because we understand that Al-Akhirah Dar al-Hayawan. It's the Quran says. That the Akhirah is like real life. What's with Allah will last. So the word Riyadh that means a garden, but we should think about it as like this is a fertile opportunity for you. And I want to say something about this class. It might be a little bit hard for you. So what? Nobody complains about doing keto. <laughs> Nobody complains about, you know, doing CrossFit. That's why we say, my teacher used to say, when I was memorizing the Quran, I said, I can't do it, man. I'm a white dude from Oklahoma, man. He said, if you love it, you can do it. If you love it, you can do it. The Arabs, they have a statement. It says, if the woman 
is attractive to the guy, he doesn't care how much the mahar is. Meaning like, he, he likes her emotionally, physically, everything. If there's that connection for marriage, he doesn't care. Don't get no ideas now. <laughs> and if the woman likes the man, she doesn't care how small the mahar is. Right, because love empowers us to do things that we never thought we could do before. So Riyadh al-Salihin is an opportunity for you to try to grow, man. I'm going to challenge you a little bit sometimes. I'm going to make you think. And I'm going to layer this class in a way that doesn't approach Islam as something which is docile. Something that's experiencing a drought. The deen is fertile. But we have to have people who want to cultivate it. We have to have people who want to engage it, who want to live it, who are inspired by it. As-salihin. Because sometimes when we come to these classes, I've been there. You know, like, I'm not good enough, man. I'm a bad person. I'm on the masjid. How am I coming? This class is for everybody. Even though it will be layered in certain ways, that the way I put it together will build your literacy, will build your functional religious literacy. So in order to do that, you have to be challenged. If you go to the gym and you want to build fitness literacy, you got to learn how to deadlift. You got to learn how to squat. You got to learn how to bench. You got to learn what macros are. That's just how life is. So there'll be moments where you find yourself like, wow, man, like this is kind of over my head. That's okay. Because I'm going to talk about why in a minute. But as-salihin, the word as-salihin implies that before that they weren't righteous. I have it here in my notes. وَالصُّلْحُ لَا يَتِي إِلَّا بَعْدَ الْفَسَادِ Yes, salam. That righteousness in this context cannot come unless there was evil before. That's why the second chapter is a tawbah out of the 20 sections in the book. The second chapter is tawbah. Why would he talk about tawbah if nobody needed to make tawbah? That's why Imam Abu Hamid rahimahullah in Manhaj al-Abideen the second, the second quality he says of people who live a life of faith is tawbah because we all make mistakes. Well, at one time we're sitting with Sheikh Ahmed and Diyad. This is in the 90s. You know, Generation X, we got a little bit different than y'all did. We got it tough, man. There was no... You couldn't, you couldn't call anyone out. There was no social media. You just had to deal with it. And Sheikh Ahmed in the eye, he said, uh, he was talking about repentance. And there was one brother with us. He said, Sheikh, I don't feel I need to repent. I haven't done anything wrong. And Sheikh, he said, you should repent. He said, what? He said, from being stupid. Because <laughs> only a dumb person, this is the 90s, only a dumb person would think that they don't make mistakes. So as-salihin are people who are working and the form of salihin is the active participle. Ismu fa'il. To fi'a yufi'a tajadud wa istimrar. Right? This form of this noun, as-salihin, implies that they're constantly doing this. That they're constantly working to improve themselves. Faddali hamni. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. So inshallah now we'll begin uh, Riyadh Salihin. The Imam, he asked me to read it from al bidaya ila nihaya. Fa'anakumullah. So Imam and now we talked about who he was, like a little bit about his importance, the kind of person he was. And then we talked about the title of the book. Inshallah we're going to talk about something very important about this book that I think is, is unfortunately sort of lost, that hopefully we can benefit from. The other thing is that unfortunately most of the translations I've ever read do not have his introduction. That's a big mistake. You know, it's not easy to translate, so I'm not by any means um, pointing the finger at anybody. But years ago, in the Azhar, we had one sheikh. The only thing he taught was muqaddimat. Like if you read the muqaddimah of al-Dusuqi, al shah kabir and you understand it well, Sheikh Ahmad Rayyan, rahimahullah, you can understand the Khalil. Imam al-Shatibi, Hirz al-Amani. If somebody memorizes the usul, Khalas. So like not to translate the introduction is a problem because in this introduction like it's a lot of really important things alhamdulillah and most importantly is the reason he wrote the book 
So he begins Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Of course, he begins Bismillah Rahman Rahim because of the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, every important affair which is not begun with Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Fahua Abtar. This hadith is da'if. But one of the greatest fitan, and I want to encourage everyone to take your class on hadith on Thursdays. Yeah, usually on Wednesdays. Is that people have confused hadith da'if with hadith mawdu'ah. This is a fitna. Hadith mawdu'ah is different than hadith da'if. And there are certain usul for how we use weak hadith. And the fact that we have those usul shows us that the scholars used to engage them. If they just, you don't have usul like for mawdu'at generally. So it's a very important principle with the weak hadith. And that is al muqayyad yutlaq, acts. If you understand the usul of fiqh, that we say yutlaq, al muqayyad yutlaq, a yutlaq al muqayyad, with something which is authentic. But something that's weak is the opposite. So we have a number of narrations of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi let say any really important issue, I'm going to explain this in English, any really important issue that's not begun with the basmala is devoid of blessings. But we have another narration that says any important issue which is not begun be dhikrillah, with the remembrance of Allah. So my question for those of you who understand what I'm talking about, which one is muqayyid and which one is mutlaq? The muqayyid is basmala and the mutlaq is what? Dhikrullah. So with this kind of hadith, when we have these different narrations, we go with a general meaning. And, we, and that's what we practice the amal upon it. So any type of dhikr is sufficient, alhamdulillah. But also Imam al nawi he begins Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Because the Qur'an begins Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Wa huwa kaman sadat al-Shafi'iyya. Fa Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Meaning he seeks the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeks the good from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of my teachers said this ba ba tabarruk. I seek like the blessings of Allah, bi asma'i. The basmalah is very important, it will protect us from evil. Years ago when I first embraced Islam, we had a halaqa of Quran with Sheikh Ahmed Diai from Senegal. So we memorized the Quran with mashallah. And there was one brother, he couldn't stop going to the club. It's a convert halaqa. It's a little different. Because a convert halaqa is a halaqa of transformative change. It's not jumud. So the brother would actually come to the halaqa of Qur'an. You know, we knew we were from that world. We could smell that he had been in a place other than the zawiya. So I said to him one day, I said, man, bro, did you, last night, because the halaqa was after Fajr. So that means he came straight from the bar to the minbar. But the sheikh, he never stopped him, subhanAllah. The sheikh, he never stopped him. The sheikh, he said, what's the problem, you know? What's the problem? Nobody wanted to, like, tell on the guy. So then he said, sheikh, I can't stop going to, like, you know, bad places. I'm new to Islam. I have certain attachments. Very normal of life. The sheikh, he said, I know, wallahi, one thing, if you say it, brother, you'll never go there. He said, what? He said, the next time you get there, you get out of your car, you're about to walk in, say, Bismillah rahman rahim He said, sheikh, if I say, Bismillah, I won't go. The sheikh said, exactly. You won't go in. So next time, we find ourselves being overcome by shaitan or our nafs, Say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. He says, Alhamdulillah al-Wahid al-Qahari al-Aziz al-Ghafar ma kawri layli ala al-Nahar tadkirat al-Li'uli al-Qulubi wal-Absar wa tabsirat al-Li'uli al-Babi wal-Atibar. Wa narwi hada bil-Isnad alhamdulillah an al-Shaykh. The Shaykh begins, he says, Alhamdulillah. You want to know how important this book is? One of my classmates, he memorized this book in two weeks. The whole thing. Two weeks. In America, that's hard. 
But it's not hard to know when House of Dragons starts. If we love something, it becomes easy. In business, they say, Usama can tell us, when you, when you, when you love something, it expands. When you focus on something, you see the, the pixels. For Sayyidina Imam al nawi he begins, Alhamdulillah. Why Bismillah, Alhamdulillah? Because that's how the Qur'an begins. Al-Wahid, Al-Qahar, Al-Wahid is from Sifat Al-Ma'ani. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, Sayyidina Shaykh Al-Marzuqi says, Naqidat Al-Awami, فعلم بوجوب المعرفة من واجب لله عشرون سفة. الشيخ أحمد المرزوقي was the mufti of Mecca for the Maliki from Egypt. They used to call him the sheikh of the tuktuk. If you're from Egypt, you know what is tuktuk. And the sheikh, subhanallah, in this poem, he said that there are things we have to know about Allah subhanahu wa taala. فالله موجود قديم باقي مخالف للخلق بالإطلاق قادر غني واحد One of the attributes we have to believe about Allah is that Allah is one. But Imam Razi says something incredible. He said not like one how you and I think. Because if you say Allah is one, isn't that tashbih? If you say one like a physical one, isn't that tashbih? So one means here لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفٌ أَحَدٌ That's why we say قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحْنَا قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ هَا وَاحِدْ أَحَدْ means I can say هُنَاكَ رَجُلٌ أَحَدْ It means it's the only man on the earth. There's no other man in existence. There's no شَبِيه, no نَذِير like him. But if I say هناك رجل واحد means one man, but there are many men. You see the difference now. So when you say واحد وحدانية ليس له شبيه ولا نذير سبحانه وتعالى. سبح اسم ربك الأعلى. فالواحد القهار القهار Allah says in the Quran وهو قاهر فوق إباري. قهار is the one that subjugates everything to what he wants. سُبْحَانَ الَّذِي سَخَّرَ لَنَا هَذَا وَمَا كُنَّا لَهُ مُقْرِنِينَ الْعَزِيز الْغَفَّار The next two he mentions in the book Al-Aziz is the one that nothing can stop him وَلِلَّهِ الْعِزَّةُ وَلِرَسُولِهِ وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one Nothing can stop him. Nothing can overcome his, his decree. إِذَا أَرَادَ شَيْنًا يَقُولَ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُمْ الْغَفَّار This form غَفَّار سِفَة مُبَالَغَة غَفَرَ means to cover, but this form of the noun is, is a form that shows like emphasis. So not just like covers once but how many mistakes we made man Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala covered them subhanallah why would he do that though Imam al he's not just writing as one of uh, our teachers used to say every word has a meaning every word there's like mantuq and mafhum right there's something going on here why would he start his book like this alhamdulillah the one the subjugator the mighty, the extremely forgiving. Because these are the two foundations of the Arifin of Allah. The people who know Allah, as Imam Ibn Qayyim, he said, al raja junuhan, fear and hope are like two wings of a bird. Two wings to the Iman. So when I think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being unique, there's nothing like Him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. When I think about everything, everything is under his control. And number two, that he's the mighty. This is going to inspire me to like have fear. But then he says, Al-Ghaffar, 
to remind me that in that uniqueness and in that oneness and in that might and in that power, Allah is forgiving. Alhamdulillah. So as though the shaykh is telling you like this text, this book is dealing with those things that we need to understand to have a healthy fear of Allah and hope in Allah. That's why Imam Abu Hamid, again in Minhaj al-Abideen, in his last book he wrote, Abu Hamid al-Ghazali, out of the seven qualities of a person who lives a, fight, a life of faith and devotion, one of them is fear, one of them is hope. It actually says something nice, like fear and hope, I'm going to put it in our language, is like a personal trainer. One of my teachers used to say that fear and hope are like antibiotic, antibiotics. Like you need them to treat certain ill. Sometimes if I feel laxed and lazy, I need to inspire myself with fear. Sometimes if I feel I'm overcome by challenges, then I should medicate that with hope. Then he says, the one who causes the night to revolve into the day. Some ulama, they said the verse in Surah Al-Zumar, يُكَوِّرُ لَيْلَ عَلَى النَّهَارِ وَيُكَوِّرُ لَيْلَ عَلَى النَّهَارِ عَلَى اللَّيْلِ is a proof that the earth is round in the Qur'an. Because we say, you, to كَوَّرَ الْإِمَامَ The turban is wrapped. Thank you. Allah bless you, man. So, مُكَوِّرِ اللَّيْلِ عَلَى النَّهَارِ But why would he mention night first? One of our teachers said, because the night is the, is the season of the servants of Allah. That's why one of our teachers used to say, وَأَنْتُمْ فِي ظُلُمَاتِ لَيْلِ وَنَحْنُ فِي دَوْءِ نَهَارِ One of our teachers used to say, like, you find yourself at night, but we find ourselves in the day. During the night, meaning the light of ibadah, the light of worship, the light of tahajjud, the light of dhikr, the light of crying to Allah when no one else is there, actually will illuminate the night, alhamdulillah. That's why Sayyidina Al-Hasan Al-Basri, Rahimahullah, they ask him, why do people who pray at night have such bright faces? He said, because they are exposed to celestial light, transformative light. Nurun, huh? Ala nur. Tadhkiratan li al-qulubi wal-absar. This is the third thing. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the alteration in the day and the night as a reminder for the people who have heart. And their heart, al-basira, as Imam al-Raghab Asfahani mentions, is the ayn al-qalb. Hearts are blind. So here he says that these things, the alteration of the day and the night, are a reminder for the people whose hearts have perception. And an opportunity to, to gain perspective, to see deeper for the people. We say in Arabic and Egypt, lib, hat al lib. If you know what is lib, mashallah. Lib is like what keeps you awake at night, it's like a really salty. Kind of like a, I think a pumpkin seed, man. One time I got in a taxi. I'm going to write a book, Mudhakkirati Ma'a Sa'iq. My stories with taxi drivers in Egypt. Like, incredible. I met some awliya, man. Like those taxis. I met some shayateen too. But most of them were awliya. One time I got in the taxi and he was eating lib. I was so hungry, man. So I said, Law samahd. excuse me, can I have some of your lip? He said, of course. He had the big sack, you know. So I started eating a lip. I said, Zadakallahu libban fil akhirah. He said, Ameen. <laughs> but why are they called the people of intellect? Because a nut is seen as something pure. So the idea here is like pure intellect. In Egyptian you say Mukh Nazif. Clean brains. So this is an opportunity, the world around us is an opportunity to move beyond the shallowness of the gram. 
I mean, if you're weighing yourself on Instagrams, no wonder you feel you have no value. And if you're wasting your time on tick-tock, tick-tock, no wonder you feel you're not going anywhere. And if you're never heard on Twitter with your tweets, no wonder you feel insecure. Man, look at the names of this stuff. It's right there in front of us. It trains us to be shallow. The awliya of Allah, they don't need filters. The only thing they need a filter from is to be alone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, tabsirat li dhuwil albab. Al albab, lub mithl ni'am an'am, the jama al albab. Wal absar, wal it i'tibar. People who have deep perception in people, and this word is hard to translate because the word i'tibar is from abara. Abara means to travel. Because the idea is, the idea or the thoughts or the things in the world travel to their mind and to their hearts and then are once again metaphorically traveled to their limbs. So he is a mu'tabir. So literally it's traveled through them. Then he says, الَّذِي أَيْقَضَ مِنْ خَلْقِهِ مَنِسْتَفَى he continues to praise Allah, Sayyidina Imam an nawi in the book, he says, Allah, the one who awakened from his creation those who he chose. Shaykh al-Harari in Manazil al-Sairin and wa Imam al-Alami ibn Qayyim in his summary of that book, Madarit al sariq What's the first, the first place to start is awakenings. And awakenings come in different ways. They come through success. But most of us, you know, success just makes us more intoxicated, right? So most of the time they come through loss. That's why Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, he has a beautiful statement. He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will continue to afflict a person with test until he exposes to them the fragility of this dunya. And they will find that the only thing they can rely on is Allah. What Imam Ibn Ta'ala called maqam tajreed, that you jarriduhu Allah Ta'ala in hadihi dunya, to be peeled away. Everything has to be peeled. And when, when it's peeled, my wife and daughter asked me to do one of those peels one night. That stuff hurts, man. But she got a beard. You peel it, it hurts. So it has to be peeled away from us. Allah SWT said that we are going to test you with a loss and everything you have. But give good news to the patient. And that's why the Prophet SAW, nobody models loss better than him. He lost his father, his mother, his grandfather, his uncle, his city. He lost everything. The beginning of the seerah really is a lesson on how to deal with trauma. And what did he say? Allah taught me. Allah taught me with loss. Praise be to Allah who awakened from his creation who he chose. So that means to have a concern, to feel some guilt, to feel the need to change, to be a better person, to, to take inventory of my sins. Guilt, if it's directed in the right direction, is a great thing. As long as it directs us to responsibility. It's not used as an alibi. Or it's not used to control people. Or to destroy people. It's used to motivate. That's why Abu Hamid al-Ghazari, he said, Guilt is good as long as it leads to responsibility. And hope is good as long as it leads to responsibility. Sheikh, he continues, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who made them busy with muraqaba. There's a section in the text called muraqaba. Where muraqaba means to be aware, to always be on the lookout. Turuquba is a woman who lost all her child, children except one. And if you took that, you know, have you ever met? I have some relatives like that. They ain't letting you hold their baby. Oh, can I hold your baby? No. 
Because they're lost. Because loss brings value. So muraqaba is the person who looks after their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the same passion. And ta'aburullah ka'annaka tarahu fa illam takun tarahu fa inyara. To worship Allah as though you see him, even though you can't see him, you know he sees you. The maqam of muraqaba. Wa idama, and there's another, another text, wa mudawamati. The best nuskha of Riyadh al-Salihin is Daru Minhaj. For those of you who look in. In English, there's a three-volume set done by a sheikh, I think, from Pakistan. It's good because it hasn't been adulterated. It hasn't been remixed. You know, a lot of the translations get remixed and nobody tells you. Depending on the group, they like to remix things. That's not, that's not, that's not good. You should tell people that we have abridged the text. Tahdeeb. So there's two, in the makhtuta, there's two words here, idamatu wa mudawama, al-afkar. Now Allah has made them busy constantly thinking about their relationship with Allah. Wa mulazamati al-itti'adhi wa al-itti'kar. And kept them constantly looking for admonishment, itti'ad. Meaning that the world around them is always an opportunity to learn. Whether I'm successful, whether I suffer, whether I'm happy, whether I'm sad. كُلُّ شَيْءٍ فِيهِ آيَةٍ Everything around me is ayat. That's why I say, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. The word Al-Alameen is from Alam. Alam is a flag. Because everything around us is a flag, metaphorically that directs us to the existence of the Creator. So every, every moment is an opportunity. Those who think about the creation of the heavens there. Those who look at camels, and look at the creation, look at everything around them. They take lessons. It reminds them of their purpose. What did kar? Kar means dhikr. And constantly keeps them, mashallah, mashallah, in a state of dhikr. فَزَهَدَهُمْ فِي هَذِهِ dar, And granted them zuhd, indifference to the opulence of this world. فَزَهَدَهُمْ فِي هَذِهِ dar. Allah inspired them not to have an unhealthy attachment. It doesn't mean that we don't have nice things. Ibn Qayyim has a great statement. He said, Sayyidina Sulaiman, he had more wealth than anybody, but he, nobody had more indifference to the dunya than Sayyidina Sulaiman. It's like they used to say, it ain't where you're from, it's where you're at. So nobody should take this to mean like, oh, you know, uh, it, this is about a mentality. Everything I have is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَالشَّغَلَهُمْ بِمَرَاقَبَتِهِ وَإِدَامَةَ الْأَفْكَارِ وَلَازِمَ التِّعَاضِ وَالْتِّكَارِ وَالْمُحَافَظَةِ عَلَى ذَلِكَ مَعَ تَغَيْرِ الْأَحْوَارِ وَالْأَطْوَارِ Sidna so Shaykh, he says, at the end of this beginning of the introduction, he says, and then, with all that in mind, they stay consistent. They look after this, they protect this. Regardless of the change of their circumstance, or the situations around them. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا so they stay upright. And he says, رحمه الله أحمده أبلغ حمد وأزكاه وأشمله وأنماه So I praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala an incredible praise. Why does he say أبلغ حمد? Why does he use a superlative? Because we could never praise Allah what he deserves. A pure praise, a sincere praise, a comprehensive praise, and one that Shallow will bring barakah. He says, وَأَشْهَدُ أَلَّا إِلَّا إِلَّهِ لَلَّهِ الْبَرُّ وَالْكَرِيمُ الرَّؤُوفُ الرَّحِيمُ He says, I testify that there's no God except Allah. الْبَرُّ وَالْكَرِيمُ Al-Barr is the one that will be good to us even if we don't deserve it because of our iman. Al-Kareem, the one that's generous. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. الرَّؤُوفُ الرَّحِيمُ 
the extremely merciful, the mercy giving. وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَحَبِيبُهُ وَخَلِيلُهُ الهادي إلى سرات مستقيم وداعن إلى دين قويم صلوات الله والسلام عليه وعلى سائر النبيين وعلى على كل وسائر الصالحين. He says and I testify that there's no god except Allah who will be exceptionally good to us if we say لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله and generous with us سبحانه وتعالى. Extremely forgiving, the mercy giving. And I testify, Anna Muhammadan sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abduhu is his servant. Wa rasooluhu and his messenger. Wa khaliluhu wa habibu. And his friend and his beloved. The Prophet said, Ala wa ana habibu Allahi wa la fakhar. The Prophet said, I am the one who is beloved to Allah. The most beloved to Allah. Allah, all of the Prophets are beloved to Allah, but the Prophet ﷺ is the most beloved to Allah. Some people, they said, Subhanallah, وَاتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ خِيلًا Maybe Khalil is greater than Habib. Some people, they said that. One of our teachers, mashallah, he said something nice. He said, in order to have a friend, that requires like intermediaries. But in order to love something, doesn't require intermediaries. And also he says, subhanAllah, in the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَكَذَارِكَ نُورِي إِبْرَاهِيمَ مَا رَكُوتِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ يَكُونَ مِنْ مُوْقِنِينَ We showed Ibrahim the dominions of the heavens and the earth. But Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم كان قاس قوسيني أها أو آدنا كان قاب قوسيني أو آدنا سوط النجم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought him close to him without anything. Without any need to see the heavens and the earth. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's why subhanAllah, Ibn Qayyim, he mentions in talking about this. On the night of Isra wa Mi'raj. This hadith is related by Sayyidina Imam al-Bayhaqi in Dala'il al Nabuwa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to the Prophet, Sell tu'ata, ask, you will be given. Qala ya Rabbi. Oh Allah, you took Ibrahim as your friend. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to him, I gave you something better. Takhattu Habibin. I took you as my beloved. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then he describes the Prophet, the guide to the straight path, the caller to the upright faith. صَلَوَاتُ اللَّهِ وَالسَّلَامُهُ عَلَيْهِ وَعَلَى سَائِرِ النَّبِيِّينَ وَأَرِي كُلٍ وَسَائِرِ الصَّالِحِينَ Then he sends peace and blessings upon all the prophets, upon the family of Sayyidina Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. مَنْ أَحَبَّ حُسَيْنٍ فَقَدْ أَحَبَّهُ اللَّهِ The hadith, hadith sahih. Whoever loves Hussein loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أَلَى بَيْتِ رَسُولُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ And all of the believers. And he says, أَمَّا بَعْد To proceed. فَقَدْ قَالَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى بَعْدَ أَوْذِ بِلَيْهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَمَا خَلَقُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنْسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ مَا أُرِيدُ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ رِزْقٍ وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَيُّ تَعِيمٌ أَيُّ تَعِيمُونِ وَيَعْبُدُونِ Verse says, I did not create human beings, jinn and human beings, except to worship me, Allah. I don't demand of them any provisions, and I don't demand that they feed me. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sayyidina Imam Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhum radiallahu anhum commented on this verse I did not create jinn and men except to worship me say ay illa li'arifuni to know me. That's why according to the majority of Ahl Sunnah the first obligation upon any person is to what? Is to know. Imam Ibn Ashir in his famous poem, we learn Maliki school. أول ما يجب على من كلف ممكن من ذريا يعرف الله والرسول بصفات مما عليه نصب الآيات. Said Imam Ibn Ashir, he said the first obligation is to know Allah. That's what we should be telling our young people, man. We talk about obedience. We talk about staying away from evil. We should talk about knowing Allah. 
It's a great argument. Why is the Prophet the beloved of Allah? Because nobody knows Allah more than the Prophet So the more someone knows Allah, the more Allah what? He loves that person. Subhanallah. إِنَّمَا يَخْشَى اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاء Ask yourself, what do you know right now? What is it that you focused on? What it is that you spend so much time? Compare that, let me compare that to how much time I spent just thinking about like one name of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, one attribute of Allah throughout the week. If I have children, I can choose every week this name, alhamdulillah, this name we're going to do this week, Ar-Rahman. So like, alhamdulillah, after like 99 months, weeks, khalas, alhamdulillah. So he says, فَقَقَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَلَى وَمَا خَلَقُتُ الْجِنَّ وَإِنْسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ مَا أُرِيدُ مِنْ رِزْقِ وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ يُطْعِمُونَ He says, وَهَذَا تَصْرِيحٌ Sayyidina Imam al he says, وَهَذَا تَصْرِيحٌ This is a very clear statement. بِأَنَّهُمْ خُلِقُوا لِلْعِبَادَةِ This is a clear statement that they were created for ibadah. We're going to talk about what is worship in the future. فَحَقَّ عَلَيْهِمُ الْاَعْتِنَاءُ بِهِ بِمَا خُلِقُوا لَهِ then they, it's an obligation upon them then to take that seriously, to take worship seriously. And to be careful of the dunya, to be mindful of it. Now we can see why his introduction is important because now we understand what is Riyadh Salihin going to do. It's going to amplify and increase our capacity for worship and diminish our ability for disobedience. That's what it is. That's why it's called riyada to nafs. Riyada means to train. They do it to horses. So the book's going to train me. It's going to domesticate me. It's going to bring me back to fitrah. The fertile verbiage of the Quran and Sunnah is going to resuscitate me and awaken me and allow me to align myself. Most of the people who are Muslim aren't happy because deep down they know they ain't living right. That's why most of us, because we know Allah demands more than anything around us could demand. But in a way that's merciful and kind and caring and supportive, not destructive. They did a study of 13-year-olds who spent three or four hours looking at Instagram and TikTok. Most of them did it in the restroom. And they said most adults, they scroll in the restroom. So where you do it is where you're doing it. And they ask these people after three or four hours of scrolling, do you feel better about yourself? Especially young women, they said no. No. But I can't stop. That's why I said it earlier, it's Islamic studies teachers, man. You have the forefront, you're at a very position, very important place in the life of young Muslims. To inspire them to love Allah, to have hope in Allah, and to be responsible to Allah. Said the Sheikh, he says, وَهَذَا تَسْرِيحٌ بِأَنَّهُمْ خُلِقُوا لِلْعِبَادَةِ فَحَقَّ عَلَيْمُ اِعْتِنَاءُ بِمَا خُلِقَ لَهِ وَالْإِعْرَادُ عَنْ حُذُودِ الدُّنْيَا بِزَهَادَةِ Here he identifies the two major goals of the book. He said, this verse is very clear that the purpose of life is worship. So then it is incumbent upon people who worship Allah to do everything they can to increase that capacity for worship and to diminish, to turn away from i'rad, to be in opposition to the evil of this dunya by exercising responsible restraint. And then he begins to describe the dunya. He says, Rahimahullahu ta'ala. فَإِنَّهَا دَارُ نَفَادِ لَا مَحَالُ إِخْلَادِ Yes, salam. Shaykh, he says, because the dunya, دَارُ نَفَادِ It's a place that's going to perish. لَا مَحَالُ إِخْلَادِ Not a place that's going to live forever. وَهُوَ مَرْكَبٌ عُبُورٍ لَا مَنْزِلُ حُبُورٍ And that this dunya is a ship to be sailed. Not a permanent destination. وَمَشْرَعُ الْفِصَامِ And it's a place where I was going to be separated. 
لا موطن الدوام not a permanent abode see why the introduction is important and if this is too difficult be patient be patient inshallah step by step push yourself a little be uncomfortable I'm here for you I got you he says قال الله سبحانه وتعالى ah then he says it's been a long time since I, I, I forgot this book man فلهذا كان الإقاظ من أهلها هم العباد Sheikh, he says, so for that reason, the most intelligent, the most awake, the most woke, talking about being woke, Islam talked about being woke 1400 years ago. Why do we have to identify ourselves constantly with the political theology of the left and the right? It is a political theology for them. Conservatives, they hate Muslims. Liberals, they hate Islam. Now what you going to do? What you going to do? You thought Marvel was on your team. I thought Marvel was down for Team Islam. Hmm? The Sheikh said very nicely after everything he said about the dunya. He says, Rahimahullah, Falihada Kana Al Aqadu min Ahliha Humul Ibad. The most woke people are the devotees of Allah. There's no activism if there's no obedience to Allah. And there's hypocrisy if there's obedience without activism. We have to have both. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ma'idah, He marries the idea of being the righteous activist. You have to be very careful. As I said, the right is at war with the Muslims. The left is at war with Islam. Look in Surah Al-Ma'idah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Sayyidina Musa, Udukhulu Arda al Muqaddasa Lati Katab Allah Hulakum. Go into the Holy Land. Khalu Ya Musa inna fiha qamun jabbarin. There's some big people in there, bro. We ain't going in there. That's basically how they respond to him. Inna fiha qamun jabbarin. Some humongous people in there. We're tiny. Khala Rajulani min aladina ya khafun and amallah. Two men who feared Allah. So they have activism, but they have fear. Don't be deceived by activism that's untethered from obedience. But we'll lose allies. If you can't be your true self, they were not your allies in the first place. If you don't have asks that make people uncomfortable, then why are you there? For the left and the right. We should not identify ourselves as being on the left or the right. We should identify ourselves as prophetic moralists. We are a prophetic community, not a political community. Politics is our tail, not our head. And why is it that we always have to follow what America says is important? We don't have an independent message? What happened to the Dawa? I was sitting one day in a park in New York City. This man came to me. He was blazed out of his brains. He was lit on crack. I haven't seen someone use crack in 30 years, but that's New York. And he came to me, he's like, man, can you give me like, I need to get a primo. If you know what a primo is, make toba. That was before I was Muslim. All my bad stuff is before Islam. That's my excuse. Just don't ask my wife. And I said, man, how old are you? He said, I'm 48 years old. He was my age. I said, man, what have you been doing for the last 25 years? He said, living in the streets. So I started giving it to him, man. I started giving him that old school Siraj Wahaj, you know, unadulterated funk, man. I started hitting him. You got a purpose. And he said to me, nobody has talked to me like this in 25 years. I needed to hear this. Thank you. I said, man, get yourself together, bro. So Sayyidina Sheikh, he says, Humul Ubad, Humul Zuhad. Wa a'aqarun nasi fiha, Humul Zuhad. Sayyidina Sheikh, he says, the most awoken people in the dunya are worshippers. In Surah Al-Ma'idah, two people stronger than a whole nation. Two men stronger than a whole nation. Why? They have activism, but it's coupled with reverence for the sacred. 
قال رجلان من الذين يخافون انعم الله عليهم people will say but man it's amazing they have all these cool things what do we take in the lesson from a hudhud with sayyidna sulaiman was sayyidna sulaiman confused by the power and incredible feet of hudhud nope so what i got bigger things i got bigger things to do i have bigger things to do then he said wa aqaru an-nas fiha the most intelligent people in this dunya are those who practice responsible restraint and he says and i know we're running out of time qala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ba'd a'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim surah yunus inna ma mathalu al-hayati dunya kama in an kama in anzalnahu min as-samaa fakhtarata bihi nabatu al-ard mimma ya'kulu an-nas wal-an'am hatta idha akhadat al-ard zukhrufaha wa zayyanat وظن أهلها أنهم قادرون عليها أتاها أمرنا ليلا أو نهارا فجعلناها عصيدا كأن لم تغن بالأمس سيدنا الشيخ he mentions the verse from Shulta Yunus that says the example of this world the life that we live in is like rain that comes it brings the earth brings out beautiful vegetation and people get enamored by it ooh it's amazing and then suddenly boom it hits the thunderstorm hits everything's gone as though it wasn't there the day before. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كَذَلِكَ نُفَصِّلُ الْآيَاتِ لِقَوْمِ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ Thus we make our signs very clear to people who think. And then he says, رَحِمُهُ اللَّهُ وَالْآيَاتُ فِي هَذَا الْمَعْنَى كَثِيرَةٌ He said there's so many verses about like this that teach us what is responsible zuhud. Then he says, وَقَدْ أَحْسَنَ الْقَائِلُ then he mentions a line of poetry. This is Bayt Ramla, if you want to understand Bahar Ramla. Yeah. Some people said this was Sayyidina Imam Shafi'i, but there's like a question about did he say it or not. That's not our discussion now. But listen to this beautiful line of poetry. Inna lillahi ibadan futana, talaqu dunya wa khafu al fitna, nadaqu fiha falamma alimu, annaha laysat li hiyin watana, ja'aluha lujjatan wa attakhadu salih al a'mal. Fiha Sufuna. Yes, Salam. Quotes this line of poetry. And he says that indeed to Allah are some very intelligent servants who divorced the dunya. Irrevocable divorce. Because they fear fitna. What is the fitna they fear? When you hear the word fitna, what does fitna actually mean? I'm going to lose something in the hereafter. I'm going to do something that causes the pleasure of Allah with me to be suspect. That's fitna. That's it. We shouldn't say women are fitna. A'udhu billah. Men are fitna. A'udhu billah. La. Wa laqala karramna bani adam. I'm a fitna if I don't know how to carry myself around women. I'm the fitna if I don't know how to carry myself around men. I need to start with myself. طَلَّقُوا الدُّنْيَا طَلَّقُوا الدُّنْيَا وَخَافُوا الْفِتَنَا نَذَرُوا فِيهَا فَلَمَّا عَلِمُوا أَنَّهَا لَيْسَدْ لِيْحِيٍّ وَطَنَا He said they left this dunya, they divorced it. It doesn't mean irresponsibility. We're going to talk about this later on. What does it mean to be zahid in the balanced way of Islam? And he says they looked at this world. And when they understood that this is not a permanent abode for the living, they made it a deep sea. When they took their good deeds as the sails by which they will sail over this difficult ocean. That's beautiful, man. Let me try to finish here, Shaykh. Sorry. The Shaykh says, if that is how the dunya is, if I have described it, in our situation, وَمَا خُلِقْنَ لَهُ كَمَا قَدَّمْتُ أَوْ مَا قَدَّمْتُ And we are like, as I said, in our situation, our purpose is like I said, Sayyidina Imam, here's the purpose of the book, فَحَقٌ عَلَى الْمُكَلَّفِ أَنْ يَذْهَبَ بِمَذْهَبِ الْأَخْيَارِ وَيَسْلُكْ مَا سَدَكَ فِيهِ أُولُ النُّهِ أُولُ النُّهَ وَالْأَبْصَارِ so if that's how it is, everything I just said makes sense to you. I remember because I was reviewing this, and my daughter, she's funny because she knows what is khiyar. Khiyar, cucumbers. 
So I was saying, that's why it's important you should read in front of your kids really loud. So I was reading it. She said, Khiyar, ya baba. Where's the cucumbers? I said, La al akhyar. Leave me alone. Where's the silk? The silk is fine. Where's the computer cord? No, no, not that silk. The Sheikh, he says, فَإِذَا حَالُهَا كَمَا وَصَفْتُ وَحَالُنَا وَمَا خُلِقْنَا لَهُ كَمَا قَدَّمْتُ فَحَقٌ عَلَى الْمُكَلَّفِ أَنْ يَذْهَبْ بِمَذْهَبَ الْأَخْيَارِ If that's how it is, then everybody should try to emulate the ways of the righteous, the good people, the prophets, and those people that the Ummah has authorized as being examples. And he says, وَيَسْلُكَ مَسْلَكَ أُولِي النَّهِ وَالْأَبْصَارِ And to follow the way of the people of Anahi. Anahi means to prohibit. What that means, these are responsible people. They know when to stop. I was watching Peppa Pig. You know Peppa Pig? You got babies, you know about Peppa Pig, man. وَالْمَلَكِيَ الْخَنْزِيَ الطَّاهِرِ So my daughter... She said, they have, they have this one on YouTube, if you're trying to put your kids to sleep, it's the best. It's like 30 seconds long and it ends. Like, okay, time to go to bed. She said to me, my three-year-old, one more. <laughs> Hour later, man, <laughs> one more. That's not uli <laughs> That's not someone who knows when to stop. The sheikh is saying the people of Nahi, the people who know when to stop themselves, well, absara, insight. They have priorities. They have principles. People of taqwa. He says, وَيَتَأَهَّبَ uh, لَمَا أَشَرْتُ إِلَيْهِ The person should pay attention and prepare themselves for what I directed them to. وَيَهْتَمَّ بِيْنَ بَهْتُ عَلَيْهِ And they should take seriously what I, what I, what I warned them of. وَأَصْوَبُ طَرِيقَ لَهُ فِي ذَارِكَ وَأَرْشَرُ مَا يَسْلُكُهُ مِنَ الْمَسَارِكَ And the best way to do that, the best path to take in doing all of this, that's why the Imam's class here is very important in Hadith. Because notice something, Imam al nawi he's doing something very important, what's called Ta'seel al-Afkar. He's rooting his ideas in Sharia. Ta'seel. To root it in an asl. So Shaykh Sidi Ahmad Zaruq in Al-Qawa'id al-Tasawwuf. He talks about this. That every idea is naru shayli aslihi thumma qiyamu bihi bi dalilihi khas. Sidna Ahmad Daruq is Zaruq is any idea that you have, you should root it in the sharia. And then you allow it to stand up. Now people want to stand up. What does the sharia say? No, 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 no. You root it and then you ask. As Al Akhdari says, Ya'lam hukmullahi fi. The first thing a person says, What does Allah, what does Allah teach me? What should I do? Then I do it. Not I do it, then I ask. I'm sure Imam, people come to you all the time, they said, I started this business, what's the ruling? But you already started the business. Hey, forgiveness is either permission. So we tell our wives. And forgive me, if, can we take a little extra time, Sheikh? Just to finish the introduction, I'm sorry. People maybe need to pray, I can stop. Just this very important point, we have to finish this introduction. Afwan. But he says, ah, thank you. Sheikh, he says, so the best thing to do is to take what is authentically narrated from Sayyid al awwalin wal akhiri from the master of all creation. Prophet said, I'm a Sayyid Warim, Adam al Fakhr. I'm the best of human beings. I ain't bragging. Al Qadi Iyad, he said, why did the Prophet say, I'm a Sayyid Warim, Adam? I'm the best of creation? Because he had to. Because Kitman al Im Haram. The Prophets will not hide what they have to teach. We're going to talk about this later on because as we go through the hadith, there's a lot of practical things you can take. Don't, it's not going to be, always introduction is hard, right? After this, believe me, it's going to be, mashallah, you know, a little bit more easier. A little bit more easier. But the introduction is important. On the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Sayyidu al-Awwalin wa al-Akhirin wa al-Akhirin wa al-Sabiqin wa al-Lahiqin, salawatu Allahi wa salamu alayhi wa ala Sayyidu al-Nabiyin, wa qaqara Allahu ta'ala wa ta'awan wa ala biri wa taqwa, then he starts to mention verses to support, to seal his ideas. Why did I write the book then? He said, Allah says that we should work towards good and 
stay away from sin. So I'm, I'm putting the book together to help you. And the Prophet sallallahu uh, on the first hadith he said Wallahu fi ka, uh, Wallahu fi abdi ma kana abdu fi akhi. Then he mentions that Allah will help someone as long as they help others The next hadith he mentions Whoever directs towards good, they will share in it In the next hadith he said all these hadith are sahih Whoever guides to good Man da'a ila hudan Whoever guides to goodness Kana lahu ajr for that person he will have, mashallah, mashallah, the ajr of the person. Whoever guides to good, whoever follows them, they will get the reward of those who follow them, and it won't take any reward from either of them. That's an encouragement to do good, mashallah. Now we see so many young Muslims doing great on TikTok, mashallah, on Instagram, seriously, right? Trying to educate young people. They, they fall under this hadith. As long as they, you know, they base what they're saying on, on what's correct and they, they have access to correct information, alhamdulillah. Khalina al-Shaykh al-Adhan, who is sunnah mu'akkada, wa'ith kifaya mawlana. Fara'aytu an ajma'a mukhtasaran. Adhan, he says, wa saha anhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Sayyidina Ali karram Allah wajha. Wallah, lin yahdika Allahu bika, la in yahdi Allahu bika, raju wahid khayru laka min humr al-ni'am. Oh, Na'am said, if you guide one person to Sayyidina Ali, it's better for you than everything. Everything you can imagine. Then he says, Rahimahullah, فَرَأَيْتُنْ أَجْمَعًا مُخْتَصَرًا مِنْ أَحَدِيثَ الصَّحِيحَ مُشْتَمِلًا عَلَى مَا يَكُنُ الطَّرِيقَ لِصَاحِبِهَا إِلَى الْآخِرَةِ So I thought I would, based on that, gather together a small summarized text of authentic hadith. There's two important points I need to make here. This is very important. Imam al nawi in writing this book, he relied on two texts. You have to know this. Because that allows us to appreciate what he did. The first text is Al-Jam'u Al-Sahihain Li Muhammad Ibn Futuh Al-Humaydi. He died 477 after Hijri. He wrote a book, mashallah, where he brought together all of the hadith of Bukhari and Muslim. And he, uh, uh, he organized it in the, in the names of the Sahaba. So like Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, every hadith Abu Bakr narrated, what Bukhari and Muslim agreed upon, man farada bihi Bukhari, man farada bihi Muslim. But unfortunately, Humaydi made some mistakes. That's normal. Now people are very impatient. It's very easy to declare people irredeemable. But that's not how Islam is. Islam is very patient with mistakes. That's why Sayyidina Imam al-Hariri in the end of al-Mulha, he said, when tajid aiban fasudd al khalala fajallam al laiba fihi wa ala. The end of Al Muhat al Arab, he said, If you find any mistakes in what I did, fix it. But fix it nicely. And fix it with rahma. Because glorified is the one who has no mistakes. We said in the Shatib, he says in Hirz al Amani, When kana khirqun aw kharqun. If you find any mistakes in what I did, and Shatabi was blind when he wrote his he was a blind person. He said, if you find any kharq, if you find any mistakes, be merciful to it. But fix it. Like, with care, yani, don't destroy me. Nowadays, everyone destroy everybody. Because you know why? No one's working for the akhirah. Everybody's working for fame. For Shaykh al Humaydi, rahimahullah, in a jam bain al Sahihain, sometimes he will say, for example, Laqad rawahu al Bukhari wa Muslim, lakin an faraday bi Bukhari wa lam yukhriju, lam yukhriju al Muslim. And that has not been fixed in Riyadh Salihin because Imam al Nawi, rahimahullah, out of his respect and love, and he memorized al jam bain al Sahihain, he followed him. So as you and I go through the text, I'm going to show you. Here he says, Muttafiqun Ali, but this. لم يخرجه مسلم أو لم يخرجه البخاري. The second book that he relied on is the book of Abdul Alim, Abdul Qawi, Al Mundri, Al Targhib, Al Tarheeb. Well, Sayyidina Imam Al Mundri, he died around 675 after Hijri. And Al Targhib, Al Tarheeb is four volumes. It's a great book. MashaAllah. 
Well, Sheikh Albani, he did the tasheeh of this book also. It's out, it's available, I think in one volume. But it kind of took the spirit of the book out of the book. And also there's some critical uh, thoughts on what he did. But Imam Al-Mundiri, in, in, uh, uh, and here you have to pay attention, in the targhib wa tarheeb. For example, the hadith, لَوْ تَعْلَمُونَ مَا أَعْلَمْ فِي الْوَحْدَ If you knew what I knew about being alone, nobody would travel by themselves for one night. This hadith, it's had, hadith I think 915 in Riyadh Salihin, if I remember correctly. If you go and look at Targhib or Tarheeb, you see the exact same word in. Because Imam al he, he took from them. There's nothing wrong with that. MashaAllah, those are Imams. al hafath al hafath Both of them are considered from the Hufad of Hadith. But there's a problem. Because the Imam Sahib al Targhib al Tarheeb, the one who wrote Targhib al Tarheeb, he didn't just mention Bukhari and Muslim. He mentioned Ibn Abi Khuzayma, Ibn Khuzayma, he mentioned other books of Bazar, Musqad Ibn uh, Abi Shayba, other books that are not so well known, he mentioned them. Why is that important? Because sometimes even if he said that it's related by Bukhari and Muslim, he chose the wording of someone else. The Laf of Bazar, for example. The Laf of Nasa'i. Imam al nawi rahimahullah, he doesn't mention all those other people who just say Bukhari, Muslim, Tirmidhi, Abu Dawud, and Nasa'i. Kutub Sitta. So, Imam Ibn Mundri, Ibn Mundir, sometimes he will say the hadith, but the text is not from Bukhari and Muslim. The text is from Bazar or Nasa'i or someone else. Imam, Mus- Imam Sayyidina Imam now is he finished, inshallah. He will say, Walaqad rawahu al Bukhari. But it's not, the, it's not the narration of Bukhari, it's the narration of someone else. What can you learn from this? And this is why the Sheikh's class is important. That the science of hadith is not a sloppy science, man. Look at the precision. So Sayyidina Imam An-Nawi, rahimahullah, when he would narrate from these books, he would follow their small mistakes. This has not been corrected in English. That, that I know of. And what I know is very limited, as we can see now. But, inshallah, as we read the text, I'm going to tell you. He said, Muttafuqun Ali, Bas Muslim, he didn't narrate this. He said, Muttafuqun Ali, Bukhari didn't narrate this. He said, it's, it's the, it's the Lafta Muslim, it's the Lafta Bazaar. So by the time we finish, alhamdulillah, the book, and wallahi, next time I'll do my best to finish on time, Amu. It's, no, he's, he also has his, what he's saying is correct too, alhamdulillah. Yeah? That we... Insha'Allah, we'll have a complete like edition of the book and your notes will serve and one day hopefully we can print it insha'Allah. Next time we'll finish the introduction. Barakallahu feekum wa jazakum wa khairan wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa sallam alaykum wa rahmatullah.